Please turn your attention to the word provided by Dr. King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our hearts are heavy. Just recently, the passing of a pastor, a friend to Brother Phil since they were, he was a young, young man. I've known him for a number of years, Pastor Stefan Henderson. I believe he was just 50. And uh, the Lord transitioned him home. But Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah, glory. That this is not our home anyway. We thank you, Lord, that you walk with us while we're on this side of heaven. You make your presence known. You help us to successfully complete the task that you have purposed us to do. And when our time is spent on this side, you have home ready. You told us, don't let our hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I go to prepare a place that where I am, there you may be also. And so we thank you, Lord, for that place. We thank you for the person and the presence of Christ. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the perfection of your word. Father, bless as we study the end impart a message on today for your glory in Jesus name thank God amen reading out of Ephesians the third chapter and I'm going to start at the 10th verse or the 13th verse I'm sorry Therefore, I ask you, do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church of Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. We're not going to be before you long. We just want to impart a word. The sermon today is the power in us. The power in us. And it's a continuation of this series that we've been doing, Active Faith. This month we've been talking about how to release or how to engage your faith, how to be active. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. And so what we want to do is to be used by God. And this is the thing that I want us to realize. I'm going to give you the, uh, some points right up front. If you don't catch anything else, one is that we have individual power, individual power. Two, we have collective power. And three, God uses us universally, universally. So God universally uses that power. So my individual power and my collective power are used universally by the Lord. And it's all for his glory and our good. By the time that Paul writes this passage of Scripture, he is in Roman prison. Uh, he's in there because, in a sense, he started a riot. 
How did he start a riot? He shares truth. And the truth was that the grace that God extended to the Jews, God also extended to the Gentiles. So the grace of God through Jesus Christ was a gift to the Jew as well as the Gentile. Well, for the Pharisees, that was fighting words. It got them fighting mad. And there was a ruckus. Paul was arrested as a rebel rouser. And Paul, smartly so, in thinking that uh, things might be more expeditious, identified himself as a Jew. And so he is in now a Roman prison waiting for uh, being tried by Caesar. While he's there, he writes several letters. He writes a letter to the church of Ephesus, to Philippians, to Colossians, and to Philemon. And so there's several things that I can mark or make note of as uh, I'm looking at Paul. He takes every opportunity, even though it seems as if uh, the opportunities are a challenge. He's in prison. He's bound in prison. Uh, they give him some freedom during the day to walk around this house that is, if you will, the jail, the jail house. They give him a, a ability to move around, but at night he is chained to a soldier so that he does not escape. Uh, but during these times of mobility and even incarceration, he doesn't see himself as chained to a Roman soldier. He sees himself as chained to Jesus Christ. He's a prisoner of Christ, and he's writing, and he writes this encyclical letter uh, that is meant to be read by several congregations, and he's starting with the church of Ephesus. And in his letter, he's writing, by the time we're in this third chapter, he's writing to unveil the mystery of the church like no other epistle that we have written by Paul or any of the other writers. New Testament writers, how by revelation he made known to me, this is in Ephesians 3, verses 3 and 4, the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So God had three secret, if you will, intentions that are revealed in this book. The first intention is God wanted to form a body to express Christ's fullness on earth. You'll find that in Ephesians 1, verses 15 through 23. To form a body to express Christ's fullness on earth. Point two, or the mystery that is revealed, the secret that is un, uh, opened up for us, is to do this by uniting one people, both Jew and and Gentile among whom God dwells. So uh, here, this create this body of Christ by uniting uh, one group of people, uh, or reuniting all people into one people. Jesus, in the book of John, prayed, Father, I pray that they would be one, just as you and I are one. And then the third intention revealed in this book is to equip, empower, and mature the people to live or to the end that they extend Christ's victory over all or over all evil. And so here, this book is to form a body to express Christ's fullness by uniting one people, both Jew and Gentile, and among whom God dwells, and then to equip, empower, and mature them to extend Christ's victory over evil. You know, really... Uh, this goes right to the heart of what the church is called today. But let me just uh, bring up some issues. Paul is in prison. And he's in prison for doing the right thing. And how terrible that really is for people to be in prison when they've been trying just to do the right thing. Just trying to do the right thing. And now as I'm even thinking about What's happening today? There are, yes, some who are trying to hijack this peaceful protest, but I believe in peaceful civil disobedience, 
And it is on those protests that during the 50s and the 60s, we're seeing some of the advantages that we have today, but they're under attack even to this current day. And during that time, the goals of the movement were including or included securing equal protection under the law, ending legally established racial discrimination, whether through hiring, predatory uh, lend, uh, uh, lending, and a host of other things, access to public facilities, education reform, fair housing, ability to vote, privileges that to this very day uh, are being challenged because of systemic racism. And so it has caused some folk to be incarcerated even though they're doing the right thing. We want to be in prayer for them, amen? But I believe that there's a call, there's a call for just as they heard the call, those who are part of the protest, I believe the church has to hear the call that it is time for us to stand up and do the right thing, to sacrifice, but do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Do the just thing because it's the just thing to do. And God is a just God and loves for people to protect justice and righteousness. Paul was in prison because his message to the Gentiles caused division and discord, disruption among the Jews. But God had given him a revelation and he couldn't keep quiet. Hallelujah. I believe that we need to pray and ask God for revelation. Yeah, you know, now listen, and I believe it starts with prayer. Now, some folk would have you stay in prayer. Well, uh, listen, Second Chronicles is a wonderful passage of Scripture, and I believe in prayer. But some, at some point in time, Jesus got off his knees, and he prayed, but he got off his knees and did the work of the ministry that caused him not only incarceration, but the cross. Hallelujah. This is a shining light moment for the church. A shining light moment. Matthew 5, 16 tells us, let your light so shine before men that they may see your, not prayers, but good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This is a shining moment. I believe that the world is looking for an answer and looking for power and looking for direction and looking for support. And they're looking at various ways and how to gather that or garner that. And the church needs to be prepared to come alongside and show them how to do so with the help of God. How can we do that? Let me just focus on these three points of power and then we will close out. We want to start with individual power. Every one of us, once we're born again because of salvation, there's the power of salvation. So when we're talking about individ individual power, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have Pass away and behold, all things have become new. So there's power in salvation. It gives you a clean slate. Hallelujah. There's also, uh, with individual power, the power of salvation, there is the power of the Word of God that helps me to have the right spirit. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart in Hebrews 4.12. It helps me to have the right spirit as I seek to go forth with the individual power and the liberty that God has given me, me wanting to line up with the move of God. So the power of salvation, the power of the word of God. There's the power of the blood of Jesus. Mm. In Hebrews 9:22, it assures us that God has forgiven sin. He needed a blood sacrifice. And so there was something about the power, something about the blood of Jesus. And, you know, even the, uh, the old folk used to get it right. I don't hear it as much uh, in today's uh, Christian world, but they used to call on the blood of Jesus. 
if there was something that was uh, looming and challenging and threatening, if they didn't have time for a long, lengthy prayer and uh, adoration and, and contemplation and thanksgiving and confession and supplication, they didn't have time. They just could plead the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And hallelujah, there's power in salvation. There's power in the word of God. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in prayer. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes me. Matter of fact, if we look at the text, uh, Paul, as he's writing in verse 13, he encourages them not to lose heart over his tribulation, which is your glory. But then in verse 14, he says, For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so this use, he's starting it out. Listen, uh, before he talks about this uh, inner man and what God is going to do, he's going to do that which is exceedingly abundantly beyond all. But he starts it out in prayer. There's something about having access to God and being able to share your heart to God and God speaking back to you. I believe the Lord has a word for every one of us. Yes, collectively, but he has a word individually. So we're talking about individual power. God wants to move you from where you are to where he is. And so we're wanting to hear from the Lord. Sometimes we spend more time giving God a laundry list of all the things we want him to work on, but when we begin to trust the Lord and not try to protect ourselves, but say, God, in your hands, I commit my spirit, I commit myself, I commit my vision, my dreams, my goals, and I turn it all over to you. God, if you just speak a word, Lord, if you just say a word, say a word, hallelujah. And when the Lord speaks to us, then we learn how to praise him. Hallelujah. I didn't include that there's power of prayer, but there's power of praise. When the Lord says to you, it's almost like I could hear the Lord today say, I'm going to move you to another level. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. And so I, even in the shower, even as I'm getting dressed, want to give the Lord some praise. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, holla, the power praise. One more frame of that. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Oh, the power of prayer, the power of praise, the power of salvation, the power of the word, the power of the blood of Jesus, the power of God to forgive sin. But then there's power of intercession. Jesus in the book of Hebrews is interceding for me. He's praying for me. But not only is Jesus praying, but the Holy Ghost is interceding. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way. Individual power. And I just sense the Lord is just challenging the church. Listen, I need you to reflect on the power individually that accompanies salvation. Jesus said, all power has been given to me in heaven and earth. And Jesus resides inside of us. Come on, point to yourself. Jesus resides inside of me. Somebody give the Lord praise. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now there's something I can get excited about the power in me. And that could be good enough. But it didn't stop with just collective power of me. There's collective power as a church. Hallelujah. When the saints of God come together. The Bible lets me know when two or three are gathered together in his name. There he is in the midst. There's power in coming together. Power in the church. Power. Hallelujah, glory to God. Matter of fact, there's so much power, 
that the Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Hallelujah. There's individual power. There's collective power. And then God universally will use this power for his glory. Look at verse 20 and 21, and we'll close out there. It says, now to him who is able, hallelujah, because of the individual power and the collective power, as he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. I've got to release that power to work. I can't keep holding on to the power. I don't care how much electricity is there until I have some connection. That which needs the electricity and the electricity have to come together some kind of way. But when they come together, they generate power. Hallelujah. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask. You know that we included Paul and the other apostles. I'm not going to even say that I, I won't dare to venture to say I'm on the same level as Paul. But can you imagine how high Paul was? and the other apostles haven't walked with Christ or experienced Christ. And so the we included Paul and the apostles. They certainly knew that Jesus could do great things. And you can ask God, but listen, whatever you ask for, everything that you ask God for, he's an ever experienced. God can do that and more. For everything you can imagine that's beyond your experience, God can do that and more. Whatever good thing that you think is a beyond your ability to even name, God can do. If you just exhaust your mind, what can you think of that God can't do that and more? Nothing. God can do anything. He can do anything. So here, as we close out in verse 21, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. God wants to work universally to all generations. He wants to be glorified in the church forever and ever. You know, as I think about this, the power that works in us or the power in us, and if I just broke, made us an acronym, used strategically, the power to be used strategically by the Lord. That is my desire. God, use me for your glory strategically. And I know that God, however you use me, it's going to be strategic. It's going to line up with your will because you're all wise, all knowing, all powerful. So God, have your way. You've already given me the power to participate in your work. You've put together a church that collectively works so we recognize that it's no one person, it's a us. It's a we. And Lord, you're going to use it to change and affect the world and give Christ-centered victory over evil. Jesus wins. I'm going to ask for those of you that are in broadcast land and for those that are here in the sanctuary, we would stand momentarily as we reflect on being used strategically, the power in us, and focusing initially on individually. Lord, you've blessed me. You've empowered me. You've strengthened me. You've anointed me. Lord, help me to release. If it's fear that's in the way, let me release that. 
If it's frustration in the, let me release it. Whatever it is that's hindering me, whatever it is that's holding me back, that I'm not individually connecting with you, connecting with the body of Christ. Because you want to use me individually, but you want to use us collectively. Use strategically. Lord, so I say yes. Now let me stop fighting and fussing and being just difficult. But Lord, I humble myself. I'm humbling myself. I don't profess to know everything, and, but sometimes I acted as, I, as, I, as if I did. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me. Forgive me. And Lord, have your way that you might be glorified and your people might be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, if there's someone out there that does not know the Lord as their personal Savior, we don't want to leave this broadcast with you in that condition. We don't know when the Lord is coming back again, but he's coming soon. And the songwriter put it like this, you better get ready. I'm challenging you right now, wherever you are, to turn your heart over to the Lord. It's time to get ready. It's time to meet Jesus. And so, on this side of heaven, this is the only time we can do this. You can't do it after he's come and collected all of his saints, the body of Christ, and judgment is, is happening, and you're before the great white throne, and then you're asking Jesus for forgiveness and expecting him to forgive. No, wrong time. This is the time. Now is the time. And listen, the Lord loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He knows everything that you've done or going to do or doing right now. And his grace can compensate. His mercy, his kindness, his favor can cover all of that. I'm going to ask if you would pray with me if you want to give your heart to the Lord. Father. Forgive me for my sins. I know that I deserve death. That's what the Bible says. But I choose life. I choose Jesus. Jesus, come and save me. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you are one that prayed that prayer and you believe it, then you are born again. You are born again. You are a brother or a sister in Christ. You're part of the body of Christ. And God has given you individual power, and you need to know how to unlock that. I need you to contact Christ Community Church. Let us know of your decision so we can celebrate as a congregation. Heaven is already celebrating. For those of you who are born again, and wanting God to help you individually release the anointing or the power that you have and, and to use it for his glory, I'm going to ask that you pray with me. If you're wanting God to have his way in your life, you're recommitting. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. You've allowed us to be here on this side of heaven. That means the work that you're wanting to do or the work you're wanting to do in us is not complete. So, Father, we want to say, yes, Lord. Have your way in our life. Yes, Lord, have your way with the Word of God and the Spirit of God and the people of God. We say, yes, Lord. Yes, help us, Lord, to come along, to align ourselves, to be obedient, to be faithful. And we'll be so mindful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. We pray. Thank God. I am available to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for you. You may be seated. We're getting prepared to close out. Thank you for joining our broadcast today. For additional information, please visit us on our website 
our Facebook page or Twitter.